Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about where and how to start learning about medical coding. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love to share the things that I know with all of you. So I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and at the end of this video helps you, I hope that you will share it. So let's get started. Okay, you want to be a medical coder. You want to start learning about it, but there is so much information out there. Where do you begin? The first things first, if you are going to a trade school or an online school, the first things first, make sure that they are training you for either the American Health Information Management Association or AHIMA or the American Academy of Professional Coders or AAPC credentials. Either one of those, as long as that program is training you for either or, right, uh, then you're going to be good because there are other medical billing and coding programs out there that train you for other, other, um, other association certificates, whatever, what have you, that no employer is looking for in medical coders. If you want to be a medical coder or even if you want to be a medical biller, they are looking for a HEMA or AAPC credentials. I am going to be leaving a slew <laughs> of videos down in the description box below. I will also leave the playlist for the medical coding job listings explained. And this, uh, these explanations on, on that playlist, they cover the degree programs from a HEMA. They cover billers, if you want to be a medical biller, uh, what those job listings look like, and regular uh, medical coding credentials. The CCS, the CCSP, the CCA, the CPC is covering all of those, okay? So there's plenty of good information in there. And I do this because I really want you guys to know and understand the language of these medical coding job listings. A lot of times people send me questions like, well, Blue, I don't really know what a medical coder does. What does a medical coder do? Well, I do have a day in the life of a medical coder, but if you're wondering what an employer is looking for, it is right there in the, <laughs> in the job listings. It'll tell you exactly what they expect out of a medical coder. Now, we've covered that it needs to be either you're trained under a HEMA or AAPC, the other thing is this, I would strongly recommend that you, if you are thinking about either a trade school or an online school, going directly to the associations themselves. Please decide which association you wanna to belong to. And some people get gung-ho and they want to go with both associations. I don't recommend that in the beginning because you need to just focus on one thing and one credential first. Okay. That way you can get your foot in the door and you can really find out if this is what you want to do. Okay. Both associations have their online medical coding programs. I will leave the link for AHIMAs down in the description box below because it is difficult to get to. With AAPC, they will boop, 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 in your face. <laughs> They're just popping up all the time when you go to the website. How can I help you? Are you ready to talk about your future? <laughs> so, uh, AAPC is not hard to get to. AHIMA, like I said, so I will go ahead and leave the uh, link for the direct um, program down in the description box below. People ask me all the time which one is better, AHIMA or AAPC. It really is going to depend on what you need and what you want and what are your goals, okay? Both associations are well respected, okay, when it comes to medical coding credentials. To me, there are benefits to both uh, as far as like what makes them more appealing to some people versus other people. AHIMA is the oldest and longest running and most steeped in history. AAPC is newer, uh, but it does have a large grassroots movement. Now, with AHIMA, they do not require you to be a member of their association to take their certification exams. All you have to do is pay for the fee for the certification exam. With AAPC, they do require you to have that uh, membership, so that is an extra fee on top of the fee for your certification exam. Now, with AAPC, they do allow you to have a free retake if you fail the test the first time with a CPC. 
Ahima does not have this. So there is a difference there. It's a difference in cost. It's a difference in the time of the certification exam. With Ahima, the CCA is two hours. With AAPC, the CPCA <laughs> is uh, five hours and 40 minutes. So there's a difference in time, but just because the CCA is less time does not make it any less of a credential. I currently hold a CCA. I have successfully gotten four positions, very good positions with the CCA. So if you hear trash talk, and there's a lot of trash talk in the industry about the CCA, the CCA is a very viable credential. Do not let anybody else's influence cloud what you want to do for your future. There are plenty of jobs that are asking for the CCA. I know because I've done a video <laughs> about on the medical coding job listings explained. I've done one specifically about the CCA. Now, yes, currently I do hold the CCA and I am proud of it. I am not going to be a CCA forever though. I will say that. Yes, I do have some educational things going on in the back that I am not bringing to the channel just yet. It is part of my process. I am not trying to leave you guys out of it. I need to have that for me because this is my process right now. I give you guys plenty. I am here for you. I am a cheerleader for you. I am here to motivate you when you don't want to do it. <laughs> uh, and I'm here to lift you up when you've had a bad day and you just can't figure the stuff out. And okay, let's figure it out together. I am doing that. That is what I'm doing right now. That is my whole goal for my channel. When I started my channel, I started my channel because I knew that there was stuff out there that needed to be talked about that wasn't being talked about by, by anybody, <laughs> okay? And I do not look at any other medical coding channels, any other medical coders uh, on YouTube. I don't because I want all of my content to stay clean. So that is why I just do my own thing and I'm here for you guys. This is why I'm doing this video. But a lot of what I'm talking about, I'm going to be leaving those extra videos down in the description box below. Take the time and, and check them out. And yes, I am promoting <laughs> my other videos, but I also know that I have over 300 videos. So to look through them is a daunting task when you can have a one-stop shop with this video. And there's just a lot of uh, further explanation about it. But I really recommend that if you are trying to decide between the trade school and um, going to like an online school, go to the association websites themselves. Like I said, uh, it is much cheaper to go directly through the association websites themselves versus a, a trade school. Sometimes those trade schools, the, the fees and, and what they cost, the tuition and everything is the cost of a car. It is astounding. And the associations are literally a fraction of that. And both of them, uh, AHIMA and AAPC, the, the programs run about the same. The cost is about the same. It's roughly the same. So there's not really a whole lot of difference. The only difference is the exam fee. Okay, so uh, that is something to think about and something to consider. Yes, you can learn it on your own. You can study for um, AHIMA's credential, the CCA. You can study it without any formal education. You can study for AAPC's CPC uh, without any formal education as well. But again, keep in mind that you do have to be a member of their association before you can pay to take one of their exams. So that is something, that little caveat there. Um, if you want to study on your own, I'm going to be leaving that independent study link down in the description box below. I strongly recommend getting the exam prep books, okay, if that is what you want to do, if you want to take the CCA or if you want to take the CPC, get the exam prep books. But I will say this, sometimes people, I don't know like why they would think that what is in the prep book, it would be... Um, would be exactly the test. No, it is, it is supposed to prepare you, okay? It is not, we, we don't know what the questions are, okay? So that is the thing. Uh, don't expect to say, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna do this, this practice exam book and if I pass it, I'm gonna pass the test. 
because you'll be surprised. These tests, they change all the time. So that is something to think about when you are um, thinking to study on your own. Yes, you can be as prepared as you possibly can, but you're not going to know until you finally get into that room and you and you're there with that test <laughs> because, like I said, we don't know. And the purpose of those practice exam books is to get you in the mode of of what the test uh, is formatted. Okay. That is the point of that. So I always recommend to do mock tests. Uh, some people say that they don't have the five hours and 40 minutes, or some people say that they don't have the two hours. Guys, this is just to get you to relax and get ready for the test. Um, because I would rather <laughs> go through the motions and be prepared mentally rather than just be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I, I, I need to concentrate on this. Just take some time for yourself. You know, put away the phones, get someplace really quiet and just do that. At least that's my recommendation. That's my tip for you guys when it comes to preparing for these tests. But yes, uh, if that is what you want to do, uh, everybody's process is different. So it is totally entirely your show. OK, this is a great field. Um, sometimes people will say, well, it's, it's medical coding is going to go away. They're going to have all of this software and it's going to do all the coding. All due respect. We are a long way from that. <laughs> we are a long way from, from being able to enter in any information and it being coded very cleanly. Okay. So don't let anybody tell you that. Don't let anybody tell you that all of our jobs are being sent overseas because that's not true either. Um, Maybe it might, they might send them over temporarily, but they have to bring it right back because a lot of times there's errors. And when there's errors, the payment gets delayed. And when payment gets delayed, people start getting upset. So there's, um, there's always those things to consider. When these, um, any kind of coding contracts go overseas, uh, you have to consider something. People who do not speak English as a first language have a hard enough time to communicate but then to add into it medical documentation and provider jargon or doctor colloquialisms, as I like to call them. When you add that in, I've seen cardiac lead and lead poisoning get confused. So and a ton of other really bad uh, code selections. So this is why it is very important when you are considering this field that you know that, yes, even though uh, you're going to have to learn medical terminology, anatomy and physiology. You're going to have to learn all that. It is possible, but you have to take your time and you have to make sure that you are fully grasping what's happening because it's going to make that much more sense when you're reading it. So that is my opinion on that one. And also, um, you just have to have a high school diploma or a GED. So there's, there's that. And those things sometimes do get verified when you are applying for jobs. So just know that. Uh, but yes, you don't have to, with medical coding, you don't have to have a college degree to be a medical coder. And we do very well. Okay. Financially we do very well. So I don't talk about money on my channel. That's one thing I am very, <laughs> very adamant about only because it is different guys. It's different everywhere you go. And it's going to depend the starting salaries are going to depend on if it's a public hospital, private hospital, or government hospital. There's a lot of factors into it where you live and is this a specialty place and that kind of thing. There's a lot of things that go into it. So, um, I have always made that a personal rule on my channel. And besides, the name of my channel is Medical Coding with Blue. <laughs> so it's always been intended to be about the medical coding side. But uh, for the purposes of this video, uh, a lot of times when people are, are thinking about getting into it, they are wondering these questions and it's natural. You know, there is um, the Department of Labor and the Bureau of Statistics that do give the exact figures for your area. So be sure to check that out. Uh, it's usually like under health information management or something like that or um, medical records tech. Sometimes it's under that as well. So there's it's it can be <laughs> under different names. So uh, be sure to look. Uh, for which and whichever uh, website that you're going on. So, but 
that is my show for today. Uh, I hope this answered some of your questions. And like I said, the videos that are down below are going to expand a lot more on, on what I'm talking about. And so that way I don't sound like a broken, <laughs> broken record. Uh, but I hope you'll take some time and, and look at specifically uh, whatever is calling you, whatever question you, that you may have. If you need to email me, I will leave my email address down in the description box below. So that way you can ask me if there is a recommended video for whatever your question is, okay? Or if you have a very specific question, let me know and I'll see if I can uh, get you squared away. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this one up. Have a great weekend, everybody. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.